Hey, how's it going? My name is Joe Allen. I'm an independent creative and today I'm going to show you how you can export hundreds of assets in the most efficient way you've never heard of before. I've shown this tip to a handful of designers in various places that I've worked and not a single one of them has ever come across this before. It's going to really, really speed up your process and let you focus on the most important thing, which is of course content creation. So I'm going to be using layer comps to export and save all of these assets that you can use for web design, website updates, photography assets, thumbnails for YouTube, pretty much anything that you need to batch process a lot of files and make it the most efficient method because when you come to update those files or say if the guidelines change or if something, something changes along the way, you can go and export all of your 100 assets in exactly the same way again. Follow along this video and I'll show you how it's done using layer comps. To show you, I've got a document here that's got some photo backgrounds. I can show you that here. Uh, ooh, it's uh, in photos. So I've got one of London, one of Paris, and one of Tokyo. I'm just going to open up the London one. And then I've got some text over the top. And you'll notice that it's within this frame. And I've just got it saying the word London. And the end outcome is to have a photo with each piece of text or title on top of them. What most people would do is they would have their text like this and their images and they would go file save as and then save as a jpeg or something like that give it a name they would then repeat the process multiple times but what happens if you wanted to change something within the design and apply it to all of your assets okay so i've only got three here but what if i had 200 and i wanted to change the frame so that instead of it having a stroke it was just a blank thing I would have to go and save as and do that multiple times. It's a bit of a pain and it just takes a long time and eats into your time that you can spend actually designing things. So I'm going to show you how you can save different compositions as layer comps. So layer comps is a feature that's been within Photoshop for absolute years. Uh, it's something that allows you to save various states of your image or layers and things like that without repeating what you're actually doing. So for example, you may have a photo like this with a logo on the right hand side. And you may have a hundred photos and you want the logo to be on each photo. Sometimes the logo may need to be on the left or on the right, depending on the composition of the photo. So rather than duplicating that layer, you can actually just save the one layer, but record its position with other visibilities of other layers. At the end of it, you can then go and export all of your layer comps and you'll have different variations of all your layers. So for example, if we look within here, if we open the window layer comps window, which I've got here, I'm just going to create a new one and I will call this uh, London V1. And I've got what my layer comp is actually applying here. I only want to turn on the visibility. Now what that means is it's going to rent, uh, remember all of my different layers that are currently turned on for visibility. So if I click OK, I've now got London V1. You can see it's active here. It's going to turn off the London layer and turn on the Paris text layer, then turn off the London photo, turn on the Paris photo, create a new one called Paris V1. And again, visibility, click OK. And again, let's do that for Tokyo and the Tokyo photo, create a new one, Tokyo V1. Okay, so now I've got these three layer comps and you can see that I can actually just select into those and it remembers which of the layers is turned on. I can select all of these just by holding shift and selecting them and then go to file, scripts, and then I've got layer comps to files. I've actually got a couple of variations of this because the Photoshop standard actually puts numbers before the file name when it's outputted. I've got a variation um, that I found through someone else's blog, I'll find a link to it and send it to people, that removes the numbers and just outputs the file depending on the file name that you have saved as the layer comp. So if I just do layer comps to files, I get this window up here. I can choose where I'd like to save it. I could add a prefix to the name. So I could call this, um, say, demo, something like that. I'm only going to export my selected ones. In fact, I've actually selected all of them. I've got my file type, so I could export these as flattened JPEGs, TIFFs, PSDs, and I can set the quality. So I'll click run. 
That's then going to cycle through all three of my layer comps. There we go, it's done. And now I have all three of those files finished. If I go to my export bin that I have here, I've got my three files saved like that. Now let's say you made a mistake and actually you don't want to change this to Tokyo. You want it to be Japan. Or you'd like this one to say France. And perhaps this one, you'd like it to just say UK. If I go back to my layer comps, having changed the layers, it remembers what's going on because all this layer comp is doing is just the visibility. So it's only going to affect the visibility. It's not affecting any of the actual layer content. Now this is great because you could just go and make amends, do adjustments, hit file, uh, scripts, layer comps to files, do exactly the same thing. I'm going to give this a prefix of country, hit run, and that's now done. When I go back to my exported ones, I've got the countries, and then I've got the original demos that I did. So it's not always just the appearance and visibility that you'd like to set. You may also like to set the position. For example, if I create a new layer comp, and I'm going to call this London Right, keep on the visibility, and also do the position. This is now going to save the position of the layers. If I click OK, now I can take the whole text, and I can move this over to the right. I can then update the layer comp with this button here. And now you'll see that if I create another one with the position to the left, so let's call this one London left, click OK, move the position over to the left, and then update the layer comp. I can now toggle between these and I've got a right version and a left version. And you'll see that you can think creatively about this and you can have certain layer comps to set the visibility, certain ones to set the position, and then update them accordingly. And before you know it, you've got multiple variations using exactly the same layers and nothing is repeated. One final thing that you can do with layer comps is setting a layer effect. So let's create another one and let's call this one London Dark. And I'm going to turn on the appearance of the layer style. Click OK. So that's how we have this now with the frame. So what I'm going to do now is add a color overlay. So if I double click into my layer styles, let's just move that out of the way. Open up color overlay. Select a color and I'd like a, a white. OK, let me go over here. Click OK. Drop the opacity down to about 50%. And if I create a new layer comp, so we can call this one London Light. OK, make sure we've got visibility and the appearance set. Now if I toggle between the two, I've got a dark version and a light version, as well as my left, my right, and then previous Tokyo, Paris. Remember that these ones are only remembering the visibility. So if I move things around, it's only going to remember that the layer is actually turned on. Now you can really get creative with how you're thinking about this. And I've got an example here of another document which has loads and loads of layers and different variations. And this is all about producing various different backgrounds of geometric shapes and lights. Now there are so many hundreds of thousands of variations for these. And if you were to save them all out individually, it would be a nightmare. So what I've got here is in my layer comps, I've just got various variations of what I feel are the best color combinations and uh, lighting setups. So if we click through here, we've just got all the different styles and I can just click next down here. And all this is really doing is just cycling which layers are turned on to give the background effect. And, you know, I've got what, like 60 odd different ones here. I could select all of these or go to my scripts, layer comps to files, and just do all of them. Don't need to give it a prefix because I've actually labeled the layer comp with the file name, which makes it very efficient for updating. File type is JPEG, hit run. That's going to go through every single variation. And then when you're done, I can open up my export bin and I'll have all of the different images in a matter of a minute. Okay, so all of my backgrounds have now been exported. 
And if I go into my export bin, you'll see that I've got them all here in all of their variations as standard JPEG images. Now let's say I wanted to adjust something within that. Say I got my dimensions wrong and actually I needed to crop it. I could easily just crop them, export all of them again, and you'd have the new variation in the new aspect ratio. Super simple, very easy. And what's best is you don't have to worry about renaming the file because if you name your layer comp as your desired file name, it's only going to save it as the file name. So you don't have to go and rename things or do file save as, make sure you're consistent because chances are you'd overwrite things by accident or you'd forget things or you'd number them wrong. This way you just set your file names and you go through and you can continue to update and it's not a problem to edit them. It's very, very easy. Okay, so that was a very brief introduction to the power of layer comps. Now I appreciate it's a very complex situation and you may need to work over this multiple times and really just get to experience and get to grips with how it's actually working. It's something that I use almost daily with website designs, website image creation, photography, if I'm updating my portfolio and I need things consistent. It really is honestly the most efficient way of keeping things consistent and up to date, especially when it comes to editing them at a later date. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more things like this, then subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Also leave a comment down below. I'll make sure to reply to you if you get confused about anything or if you really want to know a little bit more. I'm hopefully going to make some more efficiency videos, especially to do with software, as it's something that I'm really passionate about. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. Okay, bye bye. You know that feeling when you're trying to film and next door's trying to drill? Yep, I know that feeling.